Let's head up into the Scottish Highlands and see what in the hell is hunting people. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing well out there. Today we're going to continue doing some werewolf films. But before we talk about this one, do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe. Join me here. Great. Would appreciate that. Today we're going to talk about Neil Marshall's Dog Soldiers right there. I have the 4K from Scream Factory. The transfer is spectacular. So if you're a fan of this film and you're interested to know what the transfer is like, the film has never looked any better than it does on that disc right there. Leaps and bounds above the Blu-ray Special Edition Screen Factory released a couple of years back. And uh, I believe that transfer was done by Second Sight out of the UK and they did a masterful job with it. It looks amazing and it makes for a great watch with the new remaster. So yeah, if you're interested, check that out. You can get it on Amazon or Best Buy, wherever you get your 4K discs from. Now this was Neil Marshall's first big film up until this point, and this wasn't even a big film, it was a low budget independent movie, but his first big theatrical film. And before this, he did a few short films. One was Combat, which was a, a short film that he made with some of the actors from this film, just to prove that he could actually do it when they were trying to raise financing for this film. Now, this film dropped in the UK anyway, May 10th of 2002. It's rated R, a hard R. It's a lot of blood and guts in this film. It's an hour and 45 minutes long, had a budget of $2 million US. Now, Neil Marshall had wrote the original script for this back in 1996. Now, he did revise it, and it took six years of revising the script and to raise the money to finally go shoot this film. Now, Neil Marshall has also been quoted as saying that this was his reaction to American Werewolf in Paris which came out in 97. Now, I haven't seen that movie. It's funny that I just read that from Neil Marshall because I haven't seen American Werewolf in Paris in a very long time. And I was just talking about it with Dale underscore Riffin about Spider Podcast, but I wouldn't mind rewatching it. I remember not liking it at all. And it's pretty much a, a shit show compared to the original American Werewolf in London. But uh, I wouldn't mind going back and rewatching that and maybe review it. Uh, I haven't seen it in forever. And I only remember the really shitty CGI werewolves, which was... An awful idea back then in 96 when they filmed it. But anyway, Neil Marshall got a cast together. Neil Marshall wrote and directed this film. He also edited it. Sean Pertwee came in to play Sergeant Wells. And he would go on to reteam with Neil Marshall on Doomsday and The Reckoning. Kevin McKidd is in here as Cooper. He is a soldier that is under Sergeant Wells. Liam Cunningham plays Ryan. He's a Special Forces operative. Emma Clensby plays Emma. She is this woman, this team of soldiers ends, happens to run into when the shit hits the fan. And Darren Morfitt plays Spoon. And he is probably, even though I like all the characters, he's probably my favorite just because the energy he gives off. But this movie is a very simple concept. It's soldiers versus werewolves. Right in the beginning of the film where we see these this couple backpacking or camping out in the woods in this area where our soldiers find themselves later, and they go in the tent and they start getting frisky and a werewolf shows up we don't see it and kills the girlfriend and then kills the guy and we get this title card it's slammed shut and we're introduced to our soldiers um well actually introduced to cooper who is trying out for ryan's team he fails because he's unwilling to shoot a dog when ryan orders him to and he gets in a little bit of a brawl with ryan and his men and he gets shipped off back to his unit and that's where we re-meet him again with Sergeant Wells, Spoon, and the others as they're getting off a helicopter and going into the highlands of Scotland for a training exercise. And shortly after that, we get to really know that we get to spend enough time with them to get a sense of the group. They definitely do have really good camaraderie here. Uh, kudos to the actors. I do feel like they're a cohesive unit and they've known each other for a long time. And Ryan's team is out in the woods as well. We don't know what their purpose is yet, but knowing Ryan from the beginning of the film, our introduction with him, it can't be no good. His team gets attacked by something, which yet we don't know it's werewolves, but from the title, you know it's werewolves. You know what I mean? They're not really hiding it. I mean, I don't think that was Neil Marshall's intention. They just hide seeing the monster for a little while before we actually do get to get a shot of it. And our team of guys happens to stumble upon Ryan's camp and everybody's dead except for Ryan. They find him. He's severely wounded. They tend to his, his wounds. They start hear, hearing howling throughout the woods because the sun is setting. It's starting to get dark. And they basically take off through the woods being chased by these werewolves. And a lot of gunfire and a pretty cool action scene. This is where they happen upon Emma who's driving through the woods in a Land Rover. They get in and she takes him to this farmhouse because Wells got his belly slit and his guts were hanging out. They have to do operate on him to get him put him back together. And Ryan's in bad shape. And basically, the rest of the film takes place at this farmhouse. 90% um, of this film takes place in this one location. 
This film is a lot like a, a cross between Predator and Aliens, but it takes place in this farmhouse for the rest of the film. And basically they got to fend off these werewolves for the rest of the night and try to make it till dawn so they can get out of here. And basically what happens is we find out that Ryan's turning into a werewolf in a scene that's pretty damn cool. And he escapes through a window and then they got to keep fighting off and more and more of the team is getting taken and killed in graphic ways by these werewolves. And it all culminates in one final action scene where it's just Spoon. Um, when they find out Megan's a werewolf, they kill her. Spoon, Wells, and Cooper. And Wells is going to turn to a werewolf. They know this. They come to the realization. And it's one final action scene, one, fi one final last stand. And the only man who makes that alive is Cooper. And that is the end of Dog Soldiers. What to like about this film? Well, I think it's highly energetic. For a first time big movie, again, it's an independent film, $2 million, but for a movie of this scope, considering what Neil Marshall was going for, I mean, you got werewolves, which they did with all animatronics and body suits. They used dancers in the werewolf suits to try to try to give them fluid movements. And the werewolf design is pretty cool. Um, it, to certain angles, they look amazing. Some of the close-ups, you could see some of the, you know, it's a lower budgeted film, so I could forgive some of the makeup effects not quite holding up, but overall, with the suits that, when it's far enough away, they look amazing. There's plenty of gore, plenty of blood, there's plenty of action, there's plenty of story. We get to know these characters, we get to care about them, we don't want to see them get killed, and when they do get ripped apart, it's it, it actually means something. And it's a very exciting, very well done movie. Uh, I've always enjoyed it. This premiered in the US on sci the Sci Fi Channel. Uh, I remember why I recorded it on VHS, yes. VHS was still around then and I watched the shit out of that because I was you know it was a cut down version of this film um, and I couldn't wait when the DVD got released finally to see the R-rated cut I bought it and I, I used to watch this all the time it's a, definitely one of the best werewolf films we've had in a very long time this is around a time where we got this film and we got um, Ginger Snaps which is another pretty damn good werewolf film um, Bob Keenan came in to do the makeup effects and animatronics. Him and his team, they do a pretty damn good job. He would later on go and direct his own werewolf film called Howl. Um, if you've never seen that, it's, it's a pretty decent middle-of-the-road werewolf film. I mean, any middle-of-the-road to good werewolf film is a plus in my book. We don't get too many really good ones. This is one of the best ones we've gotten in a very long time. Um, it's one of my favorites. definitely in my top ten werewolf movies of all time. Negative-wise, I think some scenes are a little too quick-cut. I think that was out of necessity. It was a lower budgeted film. There's a lot of action. They were probably trying to hide that they couldn't pull off some of the things, but they do a nice job. Marshall does a nice job shooting it. He keeps the action exciting. Um, I mean, again, it's once we get to the farmhouse, we're just there the rest of the movie. And he definitely takes advantage of this one location and he uses it to its maximum impact that you could possibly, and he pulls tension out of it. Um, again, it's a creature feature. It's werewolves versus soldiers, and it's pretty damn well done. The cast is great here. They all work well together. It's all very well acted. There's a lot of Burgess slang, so if you're not used to hearing it, some of the jokes may not land for you, um, for sure, because you won't understand it as an American. It took me many times watching this to finally get the gist of what they were saying in some parts. But overall, this is a very good, excellent werewolf film. I'm underselling it. I've always loved this film. I mean, for a first feature film for Marshall, he knocks this one out of the park. And then he would go on and do The Descent. So he had two back-to-back. -back. I'd even say three because I love Doomsday. Doomsday is a batshit crazy movie, but I absolutely goddamn love it. Um, Jason Statham was originally tapped. Well, he was the front runner to play Cooper, but he decided to go off to work with John Carpenter on Ghosts of Mars. Um, so that was, you know, he could have been in this film. But I think Kevin McKidd does a hell of a nice job here, even though I like Jason Statham. Um, again, the U.S. premiere was on sci-fi, though it did do one week run at the Egyptian theater in L.A. I always loved Dog Soldiers. It's an excellent werewolf film. If you've never seen it, check it out. And that 4K kicks ass. The transfer is great. Um, I would give Dog Soldiers a 9.25 out of 10. I love this film. It's so well done. Um, it's just an exciting independently done werewolf film and we don't get too many really good werewolf films but this is one of them so if you've never seen it check it out 9.25 out of 10 for dog soldiers if you've ever seen that film leave a comment down below let me know hit the thumbs up hit the subscribe button share this video I would appreciate that i'm gonna do america Werewolf in london coming up bad moon and we're gonna go off to some other horror films we got trick or treat coming up for halloween creep show 2 tales from the dark side the movie lots of fun stuff so stay tuned but until next time bye